So hey guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Um, let's go ahead and conclude the final parts um, of this video on emotionally detached parents. Um, I just got done with my other session and I found it interesting that um, my client actually brought up the simple fact that, you know, they are also struggling with emotionally detached parent. And so I mentioned this video series and she's like, oh my God, I have to see this, you know? And, you know, I find it interesting that most of the things that we talk about here on YouTube and even on my website, because more of you communicate um, more directly with me on my own website, uh, anchoredinknowledge.com. Um, or on my blog, you guys send me a lot of things on my blog, blogs.psychcentral.com slash caregivers, which I'm going to put at the end of the video, so hang tight for that. Um, but what I notice is that a lot of you communicate to me that you feel that you have dealt with an emotionally detached parent, that you have dealt with a situation where, you know, you don't know exactly um, why, but you feel like there's something missing between you and your parents. So I find that very interesting. And so I hope that um, this video series can be useful to you. Um, maybe in even understanding your own behaviors, maybe even in understanding your own disruptive behaviors as a child. So let's go ahead and jump back in. I want to make sure that I get you guys uh, the final four to five signs of an emotionally detached parent. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. The next one that I want to talk about is, is an emotionally uh, uh, detached parent unfairly associating you or the child with a negative parent. Okay, I'm sure you've seen, especially in divorce cases, where a parent will say something like, you know, you know, dad is very negative. Um, or this is why your dad and I don't get along because he's so agitated, right? So a lot of un, 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 unavailable, I should say, oh my God, if I could get it out. Most unavailable parents, um, emotionally unavailable, I want to emphasize, um, tend to blame the other parent and tend to make it look like the other parent is the problem and not them, okay? And a lot of times they associate that child's negative behavior, that disruptive behavior with the parent that they don't like anymore. Um, and that's bad because excuse me, it's sending um, the subliminal message that you're like your defected parent, right? And that's not good for your self-esteem if you're the child. So unfairly associating the child's behavior with a parent that they no longer like, okay? That's another sign. The other sign is permissive parenting. And what I mean by that is it's a parent who kind of sits back like this, right? And the child's over there, like, setting things on fire and, like, kicking the dog and, like, hanging off of chandeliers. And the parent's kind of like, you know, do what you want to do. I don't really care. Hope you don't hurt yourself. Just make sure that you stay over there. Okay? That's what I mean. And I've seen a lot of parents in sessions like that as well. Parents in sessions where... Um, you know, uh, you know, the their their behavior just shows me why the kid has issues because they're not uh, available. They may have brought the child to the session. They may have talked to me a little bit about the child, but it's so clear that that's the last thing that they are concerned about. Okay, so permissive parenting. The next one is lacking boundaries or self-respect. I've seen some parents not in my not in my counseling sessions but i have seen parents in different areas uh that you know different places i've traveled different countries i've been to um even in giving presentations you know to parents i've seen uh parents who lack self-respect right they don't see themselves as worthy and so because of that they end up relating to their child in a way that makes the child feel like they're not worthy as well um they also may do something like um uh, lack appropriate um, adult and parental boundaries by like sharing things that are inappropriate again being their their gal pal or their boy pal you know being their bud with their their son it's a lack of parental boundaries right it's that permissive parenting again it's that rigidity I don't want to be a parent so I'm going to do this the way that I think I'm going to be able to do it in a comfortable way all right the next one is using guilt fear or grooming behaviors to dominate. Now, what I mean by grooming behaviors is buying the child's love, 
um, giving the child treats to win their favor and their acceptance, refusing to raise them or correct them or do things that most parents would do for fear of having to really be a parent, um, and kind of guilt tripping that child into loving them, even though they don't deserve that love. So that's another sign. And last but not least, buying the child's love. Again, it's that rigidity. I'm not gonna be flexible as a parent. I'm not gonna do what I need to do to be a parent. I'm gonna remain who I think I want to be right now in my life, no matter what. The only way that I can hold on to my child and continue to be approved of as his or her parent is to buy love, right? When you buy love, it's so easy for the child to gravitate towards you because you're not the disciplinarian. You're not the one with the high expectations. You're not the one ones with the rules and the discipline, right? You're the one who buys them everything that they want. You're the one who gives them a good time. You're the one who, you know, doesn't implement anything other than friendship and possibly, possibly a lack of boundaries as well, all right? So these are all signs of an emotionally detached parent, and I'm actually going to link down in the description box below um, a link to one of my articles which talked about emotionally unavailable parents. And I encourage you to post your comments down in the comment section below and even on the blog where the article is um tell me what you think of this topic have you seen this in your own life do you think you're the victim of it um do you think your child might be going through this maybe your spouse is this way right do you think a family member could be going through this i want to hear from you so let me know thank you so much guys for watching this video with me for actually giving me thumbs up um, on my articles. It's so awesome because what it does is it pushes the information to the top of the search results and it allows other people to have access to the blog posts and the articles. So I encourage you to do the same thing here. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and I thank you in advance for that. So thank you guys for being with me and as always, I wish you well. All of my information, by the way, is gonna be at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. Top one, baby. I'm